What's up, Chris? Hey, boss. What's up, brother? What's up, man? Hey, I got this cool project that I'm working on, and I already have a whole bunch of different tools and stuff. Sweet. And I was looking at these three tools that I was going to put in three different holders, and I thought, you know what? Let's actually make a tri-cut tool yeah. custom, and then you can actually film it and show these guys how we actually engineered it and how anybody can actually make a tri-cut tool right. that'll save them on time. So instead of having three different tools and changing tools, changing tools and all that, it's just one tool that basically will drill, ream, and chamfer all at the same time. Right. And since we have 300 holes, we're gonna save a lot of time. Right, love that idea. But then every single hole is plus or minus two tenths, so we need the reamer to be absolutely perfect. So I'll go ahead and send you the solid model and then I'll send you a print and then we'll make these three tools into one tri-cut tool. Right. Boom. Boom. All right, brother. Thank you. Thanks, brother. So Titan gave us a plan. Now let's execute it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up Tool Studio and I'll need to make a 628,000 reamer plus or minus two tenths. Now I also need a drill and a chamfer tool. So I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of one inch carbide and start programming. According to my program, I have to have a tool stick out of 3.880 thousandths. I'm gonna go ahead and make it 3.9. That will have a little bit extra clearance on there. Now with that at 3.9, we can go ahead and start our roughing cycle. Now this roughing cycle is gonna be removing a lot of carbide. It's gonna be removing a little over half a pound of material. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and go through the beginning stages of our program and turn our solid piece of carbide into a step blank so we can create our drill and our reamer and our chamfer. Now, if I come down here to my tool profile, I've drawn out my drill profile, my relief groove, and my reamer and chamfer tool. So now what I wanna go ahead and do is I wanna rough out all of this material. So the first thing I did was I came up here and I did a preform roughing. So I took a Tearlit RC wheel, which is a dedicated roughing wheel known for its corner retention and high material removal rates is I went ahead and plunged down four times and created my drill diameter and my reamer diameter. What I had to do was I had to make it my reamer diameter first, which is gonna be 628 thousandths. So I made all of this, all of the green, 628 thousandths. Then what I did was I went ahead and put my relief groove in there using another Tearlit StarTech XPP Plus wheel. So I use that wheel because it's a lot narrower and that's gonna give me a narrow relief groove. And for that operation, I use an eccentric neck, which basically all it's gonna do is it's gonna plunge down to the desired diameter and rotate 360 degrees. Now I'm gonna use that same operation, but with the Tearlit StarTech RC wheel, and I'm gonna remove the 8 thousandths I have on here to make my 620 thousandths drill So I have my reamer diameter, I have my drill diameter, I have my relief groove, and I have a lot of that carbide out. So when I start to flute the reamer, it's not eating up too much carbide. So now that I have my drill diameter set and my length known, I can go ahead and create another program for a 620 thousandths drill at that same length was gonna be 625 thousandths. Now, once I have that drill diameter, Tool Studio has a thing called Merge Profile. And I come up here to the left-hand side, located under IDN, and I can select Merge. Once I select Merge, I can actually marry it to my step tool. And when it's merged, it's gonna go ahead and take that cutting length of that drill that I created and merge it onto the step tool that I roughed out. So the first thing it did was it's gonna flute it. So light green is my fluting. So for this drill, it's gonna be a super basic drill. It's gonna be a two flute drill. I'm gonna be using a Tearlit StarTech RC wheel, and that's gonna help me remove all that material out of the flutes. I don't wanna flute all of this at once because it's gonna be a little bit much on my wheel. So I wanna show you the cross section function and how to make multiple passes in the same program. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna select this operation. That's gonna be my fluting diameter one. If I come up to how many times I want it to pass, I have three passes at 100 thousandths per pass. Now to make sure it's doing what I want it to do, I'm gonna go ahead and select my cross section, move it over to where my flutes are and create an onion layer. That way I can see how much material is being removed per pass. I wanna do this because I wanna make sure that my first and last pass are pretty much the same and I don't have a big cut going on one end 
and a small cut going towards the end. I want everything to be nice and uniform. That way, as the wheel is grinding, it's doing a consistent motion and it's really optimizing my grinding profile. Now my cross section tool is gonna to be located up here. It's gonna be a four flute tool with a cross section in it. Now when I call that up, a red hexagon appears. I can actually come up here to my point on plane and select my X movement. Now I can move that to wherever I want to move it, but I want to move it directly in front of the flute. So right there, I have it at the deepest part of my flute. Now if I come down here to my bottom tab where it says cross section, I can actually pull that up. So right here is my fluting profile. That's where my drill profile is going to be. So my onion mode is going to be located right up to the top here. Once I select that, it's going to optimize all of my tool paths. Now I have my first pass, my second pass, and my third pass. Just as an example, say I wanted to do 50 thousandths per pass, not 100 thousandths per pass. You see on the first pass, it's gonna remove a lot of material and then it's only gonna do 50 thousandths at a time to go down to the bottom. I don't want that. I want everything nice and consistent. So instead of 50 thousandths, we're gonna keep it at 100. And that looks more uniform. I like the way that looks. We're gonna go ahead and run it at a little bit slower RPM with a higher feed rate at 3300 SFM, five inches a minute. That's gonna give that wheel enough time and enough pressure to resharpen itself and to get that carbide out of there. So now with the big operation done, we're gonna go ahead and switch to an 11V9, which is a cup wheel. And I'm gonna use that wheel to do my 135 degree point angle for my drill tip. Now the red and the orangish yellow are my primary and secondary clearance profiles. Now that's gonna make up my 135 degree angle for my point drill, and that's gonna make up the secondary clearance angle to help get those chips out of there and break them. For my gash and my drill, I have to use a Tyrolet StarTech XPP Plus gashing wheel. Now this wheel is gonna be a 1v1 wheel. That means it's gonna be at a 45 degree angle and it's gonna allow me to get into the middle of that drill point and create a gash. Now my reamer and chamfer tool is gonna to use this 1v1 wheel a lot. So for this little operation, I wanna make sure to take it nice and easy and not break down my edge too much. Now in order to complete this drill, I'm gonna go ahead and do a diameter clearing operation. That's gonna create the yellow. That's gonna make sure that this back edge of the diameter doesn't rub on the hole as it's drilling. Now for this operation, I'm gonna go ahead and use a Tyrolet RC wheel What's gonna happen is that wheel's gonna come down, that tool's gonna come in, and it's gonna rotate and clear out that back profile. And then that wheel's gonna go up, it's gonna turn 180 degrees because there's two flutes, and it's gonna do the same for the other side. That's gonna be known as a diameter clearing operation. I can actually look at all these operations under my machine tab so I can make sure I'm not gonna have any crashes. So as you can see right here is gonna be a crash. I can use my setup point and I can switch the operation. And what's that gonna do is my setup point is wherever you measured it. So your setup point is gonna be if you measure from the back of the spindle to the front of the wheel or to the back of the wheel. And as long as the width in your wheel is correct, it knows to go from point A to point B. So as you can see, it's switched up here. With the merge profile, I didn't have to program any of that. All I had to do was merge it to my existing step blank. And all that did was make it to where it goes right on the edge of where I created that drill diameter. So now with our drill all the way done, we're almost finished with this tool. The last thing we have to do is make Titan's custom reamer. 628 thousandths plus or minus two tenths. So let's get right into it. Under my tool profile, here it is. The line's gonna come all the way across, then it's gonna shoot up at 45 degrees. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and flute this section right here, but when I flute that, it's gonna go into that 45 degrees. Now that's a good thing because when I come in to do my clearances, that's gonna be a little bit less material that I have to remove. What I did to make this reamer a little bit more efficient is I put a five degree helix on it with a very slight taper. Because with the reamer, you're always cutting with the lead-in edge 
and that's what makes a reamer cut perfectly round. I've got my flutes all the way down. Now, what I have to do on this side is I actually need a probe down my 45 degree chamfer across my flutes of my reamer and I need to create that 45 degree lead-in edge on my reamer similar to what I have drawn here. That's going to be my lead-in edge right there. In order to follow the chamfer, the reamer, and the 45 degree lead-in edge, I have to create a clearance profile and how I did that was I select a probing profile and I hit reconfigure so I want the geometry to intersect with the fluting. Now if I hit next, I want to come down here and I want to select my 45 degree angle across my reamer and then up my 45 degree. After that, all I have to do is hit finish. And that's going to give me all of my points down that chamfer, down that reamer, and then down that 45 degrees. Here's the last thing I have to do is I have to create a clearance profile grinding operation. I want it to follow my probing cycle. I've already programmed it. When I hit reconfigure, it allows me to show you guys exactly what I did. It's gonna share. I want it to share my probing profile. Now the probing profile is exactly what we just did where we went down that 45, down the reamer, and then up the chamfer and finish. That's all I have to do. So now my clearance grinding operation is married to my probing profile operation. I'm going to be using the same Tyrolet StarTech XPP plus wheel that's going to be a 1v1. I chose to do a 1v1 because I have to come down, across, and then down again. Whereas if I use a cup wheel to do this clearance, I would have some issues and some mismatches. Now with this chamfer tool, as long as it's at 45 degrees, it's going to be breaking edges of aluminum. You always have to remember when you're designing a tool, what the material is going to be cutting. Titan's going to be making a lot of holes in 6061. So what we have to do is we have to design this tool specifically for aluminum. If we were making a chamfer tool and a drill and a reamer for steel, we would have to change up some geometries. But what I did was I took Titan's instructions and I created a tool to match that to make it the most efficient. Now let's take it to the mill and test it. All right, Chris. Let's do it. How confident are you in your grinding abilities? 86%. <laughs> Excellent. Sounded pretty good there, little fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it did pretty good. I'll be the judge of that, sir. Very nice, Chris. You like it? I like it. It did pretty good. I'm actually shocked. He's always shocked at what I can do. Yeah. <laughs> he shook your head. No? <laughs> Three tools in one. All right, I just finished drilling, reaming, and chamfering our part. We're able to create this tool for Titan using the Walter machine and the program Tool Studio. I was able to merge two different programs and to make one tool with three different operations. So again, if you like what we're doing, make sure you go ahead and comment and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.